I watched Klaus roll out of his car and make his way through the snow to enter the house. The moment he disappeared inside, I climbed out of the GTO and started toward the back door of the creepy place. Coming in through the kitchen door, gun in one hand and a big six-cell mag light in the other, I moved through the kitchen and entered a long, dark hall which led to the living room. Stepping into the living room, I heard a squeak of flooring behind me. Turning, I just had a glimpse of a black mass flashing toward me, a hand rising up and over his head, something thick and black in his gloved hand. It was a crowbar. It cracked across my gun hand in a searing blow. Staggering back, I threw the mag light up and made the second blow of the crowbar glance off and away from my skull. But in the darkness, I didn't see the gloved fist in time. It caught me in the jaw, snapping my head back and exploding bright lights in my head. I don't remember dropping to my knees from the blow. Shaking my head, trying to get some vision back, I tried to stand up, but my legs felt like lead weights and I couldn't focus my eyes. Laughter. I heard laughter, that of a madman's, and then through the pain, boom, boom, the ringing explosions of a 9 millimeter Glock exploding in two rapid shots directly behind me. I heard a grunt, and then the clatter of a heavy body falling to the floor in front of me. When I opened my eyes and blinked, I found myself in a sitting position raced in a sitting position by the snow-shovel-sized paw of Frank kneeling beside me. You okay, Turn? Never mind. Stay still. Got an ambulance crew on the way. And don't move that right arm of yours. Damn it, boy, but you'll look like hell. I was happy to be alive.